Okay. Oh, we just did this. We had a Zoom with our calendar committee, and I'm like doing this constantly. I'm like, oh, make sure my hair is okay. It's a Friday. We didn't do anything, so there's no makeup. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <done. laughs> so we can do that together. We're good. We can Photoshop it in. Well, right. You know, we can just add some of those, that little Barbie machine, you know, we can <laughs> spice it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So you already told me that your learning outcomes when you're finished are that you want the kids to be able to read and comprehend a piece of poetry. Right. And also make connections between um, the piece of poetry they read and what we're doing in science or a story that they've read before or something in their Hello. real life. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Do you want me filling this out too? I can make you a copy. Okay, that'd I, just, be perfect. I know it's just easier to read <laughs> yep. when you have something mm -hmm. in front of you. Okay, so what kinds of language will the kids need to be able to um, use or have in their brains when they're trying to comprehend this unit? Kind of like a sentence frame type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like when they make a connection, I want them to recognize that they made a connection. So I made a connection when I read this part and then elaborate on that part too. Okay. Have you thought about what kinds of new vocabulary or language that is actually tied to poetry they might <laughs> need? Okay. So um, maybe those are some things that we, what experience and perspectives that we need to add to mm -hmm. this. So when we're talking about poetry, figurative language is huge. Yes. So in that abstract language that we mm -hmm. usually don't get into. Mm-hmm in other texts. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that we'll need to add in. So we'll definitely have to have some um, figurative language. Which that can I can work into like our language workshop then too. Yeah, perfect. And we'll want to kind of understand that abstract mm -hmm. concept. Okay. So being able to work in that figurative language into your language workshop, what specific, I mean, there's so many different types of figurative language, mm -hmm. so what specific things do you feel like, um, if we want to take a look at some of the standards here, let's say I turned it down. I have it up there. in mine too. Okay. There's actually any vocabulary within our standards, but the different claims and the ways that we can um, read and comprehend mm -hmm. literature. Um, for instance, imagery is probably one of your biggest ones. You yep. probably want to hit and mm -hmm. metaphors and similes, which mm -hmm. knowing these kids from last year, this is something we could put in here. They have had some mm -hmm. poetry okay. um, in fourth grade, at least my classroom right. from last year. So you might have a few that don't mm -hmm. have the same experiences exactly. Um, you should ask them, do they remember um, how you eat a poem? Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll want to talk a little about some vocabulary like literal versus abstract. Yes, because one, and this was another reason why I wanted to do poetry, is they, a lot of my kids look at what is said in the text and this is what happened, but to understand why it's happening or what might later happen and thinking about it in that terms instead of just here in the moment and then they just read on and not even think back to it, I thought poetry would be a good way to just develop those abstract thinking skills okay. to tie into reading a story. Yeah, I really like that. And I, I really like how you're not just teaching a poetry unit, you're actually teaching poetry and connecting it to their science yes. and their social studies and those things mm -hmm. too, because that will help to solidify their learning a lot too. And it doesn't just become, oh, that's just poetry. We only do it yes. on this small unit yes. of time. We never, Everything, you know. I want it inter like woven into what they've already learned. It's not something new, which is also an another struggle for some of my students is, okay, now we're in math, now we're in reading, mm -hmm. now we're in language, now we're in writing. And just this week, they, somebody made a connection between reading and they were responding to reading. They're like, hey, this is kind of like what we did in writing a few weeks ago. I'm like, right, because it's all kind of connected. They're like, yes. Hey, Yes. Well, very good. So you finally, already, <laughs> yay! So you're already building those connections yes. throughout. So that's mm -hmm. good. So they'll they'll start to um, 
you know, we're really focused on developing these essential questions or the mm -hmm. things that we want them to really focus on um, will help with that. So imagery, probably metaphor and simile are some other vocabulary words that they've had exposure to, mm -hmm. but I think they might need those to help them build um, a little more with those concepts. Um, okay. So how will you how will you assess what they know and then help them to relate it to new understanding? Like how will I assess them while I'm going yes, and then at the formatively. end? Um, looking at the responses during the unit, just their reading responses, their written responses. Um, I really like using the plickers, <laughs> but I'm not sure how I would use it in this sense. Um, so that might be something yeah. we look at too, of how to use it for that. Um, it's just such a quick and useful tool that I've used it a couple times in reading, and it's math I've really used it in, but really I'd like to figure out how to use it in reading too. To okay. Yeah, I think we could definitely do something with those. Because um, I think were you in my room when I tried when we used it in a reading? I think I, think I was. It, yeah, yeah, yeah so. I recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so perhaps maybe even learning some of those terminologies. Mm -hmm. Is this a metaphor or simile yes. or you know I'm using imagery? Mm -hmm. What do you see in it? Right. Because like when I use it in math, I'll do it'll be like a quick at the end of the lesson to see who got it and who didn't, and then I it shows me. Like, I can group a ki the kids together, and so when I send them off, I can pull those groups, those kids aside, and maybe just do a quick refocus, reteach. Oh, that's a good idea. Use for small group reteach. Right, and so, like, when you said about the, um, what's this an example of? Maybe give them an example. What's this an example of? Imagery, alliteration, um, and then look to see maybe who didn't get it and then meet with them and just say give them more examples and yeah. reteach it so that sounds really good okay okay so I think with our essential questions you kind of talked about what you want them to do with a learning outcome mm -hmm. so reading and understanding and comprehending a piece of poetry so what's a question that we could ask that would cover the unit itself something kind of broad that they could um, I was trying to look up some examples that I've used before um, but I can't find it off the top of my head. So, okay. um, so overall, I really want them to under to understand it and comprehend it. So, how how do I read a poem to understand it? Okay. Because then, because with that would tie in, I need to understand the figurative language, mm -hmm. the words that the author uses, um, the organization of it, making connections. Would that kind of encompass all of that? Yeah. And I think, you know, one or two questions is okay. And I think with your connections piece, mm -hmm. that is such a powerful um, skill that we mm -hmm. want our kids to be able to do. So perhaps another question where we focus on Okay, so how do I read it and truly understand it, like comprehend it, mm -hmm. and then how can I take those connections I learned from poetry and extend it right. to other elements? Yes. So, um, because what I'd really like to do is we are doing our, um, in science, we're moving into kind of our earth science and space unit, and then with that we'd like to pull in some Greek and Roman myths Ooh. for... Um, like during a reading workshop too, but I'd like to even pull in some poetry from so, like with some science background so that they can make connections between what they've learned in science and the poem that they're reading. Like it might not Perfect. come out and say this is about a star, mm -hmm. but something like that. So that's kind of what I was okay. looking at too. But I mean that doesn't have to be all it is, but that is 
right. a piece that I would like to look for in it. Well, there is a resource that I can, um, I'll put down and we'll add this to our resources okay. page. Um, have you ever heard of Grandpa Tucker? No. <laughs> so Grandpa Tucker is this guy <laughs> that writes poetry, uh -huh. but he writes poetry about subject areas. So he taught me, honestly, when I was teaching, um, this is really embarrassing to say, and I'm saying it on camera. I could not multiply decimals, <laughs> and I had to teach it. And yeah. I was like, I don't get it. And I've read all these manuals. I've watched videos. It just wasn't making sense. So I found Grandpa Tucker, and uh -huh. he teaches how to multiply decimals with poetry. And it finally just clicked. Yeah. But language is my thing. So I was like, oh, yay. But he does it for, he has stuff for science and social studies and math. And so there's even math can concepts that uh -huh. he teaches through them. So um, he's somebody we can pull in as a resource. Grandpa Tucker. Yes, Grandpa <laughs> Tucker. Um, I had a gym teacher named Mr. Tucker, so I always remember that. I'm thinking of a former student, like, where <laughs> <laughs> my mind went, which finds it really funny, which this former student would make videos like this. <laughs> okay, well, see, perfect. Okay, so we'll add that to our resources page when we're um, putting okay. them all in, so you've got that. Um, I did also pull some different things um, for resources as well that we can pull and look through okay. and decide if those things are meeting what our essential questions are and what your sp specific learning outcomes are and then you okay. know, get rid of the other ones. So then we actually start talking about summatively, how do you want to, at the end of the unit, how will you assess that these kids can answer these questions? What are some ideas that you have? Um, I feel like there's, I'm trying to think of, I'm kind of all over the place, I'm kind of thinking of that there needs to be a writing component of it too. Um, but they also need to be able to read a piece of poetry and be able to explain what the poem's about. Okay. And the explanation even, you know, what's the big picture type of thing. Big picture. I like that. Okay. So it looks like um, you kind of have a, um, not essay mm -hmm. format per se, but maybe you have, is the writing going to be tied to the explanation or is it going to be actually having them write their own poetry? Um, I think for the reading part of it, it would be writing the explanation. We've also talked about doing a poetry unit in writing. Okay. Um, at this point of the year, I don't know if we will be able to do that because we're doing our memoir unit, and it's the first time we've done this unit of study in, with writing, so it's kind of taking us a lot longer. But looking into the future, that now that we've done one once, mm -hmm. it didn't take us as long the second time around, right. which even... So um, I don't know if that writing component part we'll, we'll get to, but we could okay. probably tie it into maybe a little bit in their work on writing time during their daily five. Just okay. I just know um, with kids being pulled for title in special ed, it's not, not everybody's going to have that time. Okay, okay. All right, so if we're looking at big picture, mm -hmm. so one of our the biggest things that throws people with yeah. poetry yeah. from experience mm -hmm. is that it's sometimes our literal minds cannot grasp or grapple with the idea that poetry can be very abstract, yes. too. So um, what are some ideas that you have about um, teaching them that concept so that they're understanding that figurative piece? Is there a way that we can give them like a concrete experience that they can relate to it so that when they go to read the poem they can kind of refer back to that? Do you mind if I go get a book? I'm no, kind of go thinking ahead. That I might have. Absolutely.
On your silver tray a poem lies, but before we can cut through the surface we must pin it down. Transfer it to your workspace, cradling its delicate body like a newborn baby. Now, pin its upper limbs down with your knowledge of the author's context, and the lower limbs with your understanding of the form. With a steady hand, make an incision in the content to reveal its inner glory. Peel back the skin and alternating between scalpel and tweezers, carefully remove all of the internal organs, similes, metaphors, personification, alliteration, onomatopoeia. The final step, the most important. Ensure you listen close, crawl into the space you've made and wear the poem out to dinner. This video is about what you need to do with a new poem. Sorry about that. You're okay. fine. So, and I've not looked at this. On your silver tray, a poem. Okay, so there's comprehension connections, which okay. um, I think every teacher got a copy of it this year, but the same person did genre connections, and they always, like, they launch it with a concrete experience to for the kids to relate to, so I have no idea what it looks like. Okay. Um, but I've used it for historical fiction and fantasy. And this is the poetry one? Yes. Um, Of some kind. Mm -hmm. A glass jar. Oh, this is a great way to get your mm -hmm. exposure. What experiences do they already have mm -hmm. for this? I love it. Oh, I like that with my head and with my heart. Mm hmm. Ooh, you know, Mother's Day is coming up, yep. so this might be a way that you could tie mm -hmm. in something along those lines. So tell me about your mother with your head and then with your heart, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And then what's the difference between using your head and using your heart? And then... Oh, I think that's a really good mm -hmm. one. You take risks. And then, so then she goes and she jots down, jot, jots down the feelings and thoughts about her dad or mom on little slips of paper, reading each one out loud and asks the students, for the students to hear and then put the papers into the jar. So that's that concrete, that concrete experience that they can anchor their learning to. Okay, and then how is a poem like a jar? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, and sh they put a lot of the like turn and talk to your neighbor about it, so that they are talking about it too, rather than just having them sit there. And even like GRR is. I mean, it's easy to do it with that. Yeah, and so then I like, so those who, who don't have a clue about this container business, they can't get past <laughs> it. They still have that experience to maybe talk with somebody who's starting to process it more than just a jar. Okay. Okay. All right, so...
doing something like that. And then sometimes, so there's always a concrete experience, and then she tries to make a musical connection. Okay. Which song lyrics and poetry, I think, would be a good connection, mm -hmm. too. So we can, I mean, I kind of pick and choose what, because of what the kids need, mm -hmm. but just to, and there's always an art connection, too, so that... Oh, I like that too. They give them a concrete experience, and then there's usually a music connection, an art connection, and then I take it and move on to actual examples of historical fiction, or in this case, poetry. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a way to introduce it to them? It does. Okay. It does. Um, I, I love the, the jar idea mm -hmm. for them to actually start working on This is where I get my ideas that. for my anchor charts. Ah, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Resourceful. Okay, so having that um, jar concrete mm -hmm. example piece mm -hmm. and then moving into that music connection, I think song lyrics are the way to go with that okay. because that right there you're already teaching them about rhyme and rhythm and how is it that they um, make connections to music and mm -hmm. why does one song sell and one doesn't, you know? Yep. So what, how is, what kinds of things do you notice? Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that, that or why one person likes a song and you don't like it. But exactly. It's their favorite song. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because it speaks to, you can go back to this, mm -hmm. their heart. Yep. So sometimes I can hear songs that, mm -hmm. you know what, it doesn't, or think about your mood even. So I, it, when I'm running, I want to have really fast beat, hard music. <laughs> yeah. But when I'm working, I would like soft music that's, you know. Yeah. With no words. I can't have words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those kinds of things. So those, those connections, I think that's a great okay. idea. Um, the art connection, there's a lot of different things, if you, especially if you look at, if you're talking about that abstract concept. Mm -hmm. So what if you have some examples of art that are abstract and yes. art that is not? And mm -hmm. talk about how do they make you feel or the mood mm -hmm. or, you know, what things are your head thinking and what are your, is your heart feeling? Mm -hmm. What kind of feelings do you get when you mm -hmm. see it? So that might be a good way to tie those back together again um, with your heart and your head. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Glad I thought of this. Yeah, that is great. And really, and like, like when I first started using it, I kind of stuck to it. I'm like, just to get, but now, I usually that I kind of stick to that concrete experience. But then mm -hmm. I kind of fill in my own. But this is, it's kind of like the comprehension connections. I, it's, it, I just think it's a good resource. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got that. Okay, perfect. So that's kind of how we. You're gonna intro it. Mm-hmm. All right, perfect. And then you can make those musical connections, art connections. Mm -hmm. There is um, one thing that um, you can do, too, if you've got some kids who are still not quite grasping that abstract mm -hmm. concept, um, going back to creating that concrete example. So if you take a picture of the kids' faces, mm -hmm. this is who I am, mm -hmm. right? This is me. Yep. Well, that's what we see. So then we can print them on a, like a piece of paper so that uh -huh. half this is their actual face yeah and then leave the other side open mm -hmm. and have them draw who they are yeah what don't we see mm -hmm. and then this is the abstract side yeah. of you and the so you can make the minecraft and yes. yeah I like that yes yes um, and then you can actually do I think I might have brought one I like I I just like that idea to do it with all of the kids though yeah like that in something we can even post Kind of the end of the year type of thing, and what I've done in the past with that mm -hmm. is, you see how this is the this is the literal. Mm -hmm. This is your half of the page. Yep. This goes with it, so they mm -hmm. write a version of their poem mm -hmm. about who they are. This is these things, yep. this, and then this is who you are. So they do the drawing, mm -hmm. and then they go through and they fill out their auto bio poem. Mm -hmm. This could be a writing element that you attach to the yes. bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So I like that it. Maybe something kind of fun for them to do, but. I actually ha pulled this out of my poetry for the day, so I had enough copies. Okay. I had enough for your awesome. class. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay, so um, the who am I kind of mm -hmm. goes along with what is a poem or mm -hmm. what am I, you know. This. And that we could, I could even have them doing during their writing, work on writing time. Mm -hmm. Because then they're still thinking of the abstract part of poetry. Maybe they're not reading an actual piece of poetry or writing about it, but they're, but they are, mm -hmm. you know, in making that abstract. Because I think that's, I just see that struggle with a lot of my, even my high readers, that abstract thinking. Yes, yes. It is very challenging. So 
Um, okay, so if we, looking at the sequence, if you want to look at that next page, mm -hmm. that sequence there, we kind of mapped it out on the back here with okay. your um, heart versus your head jar concrete experience. Mm -hmm. And then um, do you think moving into the who am I kind of thing would be what better? If we did do the the art, what if we did the art connection first and then move into the who am I so that they get that art connection so that I when like they it. go to do the who am I, that art yes. is there. Love it. And then you want the musical connection? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I type all these up. It's okay. Just, I, I don't like to type when I'm, I'm talking to you because you know, it I'm just okay seems impersonal. Like so. <laughs> and I like your, I like your music. I, I get it. Okay. But then I want to move into actual sharing pieces of poetry and modeling how to how you think about it in. Um, so do you have any of, um, so I'm thinking about some of the things that you're talking here mm -hmm. and making those connections to other pieces, like works by like Sharon Creech or... I don't have anything as far as that goes. Okay, so okay. that's where I'm So those are poetry. resources, pieces that I could, yes. I could provide for you? Yes. Um, that you could definitely do some modeling with. And, and okay. in fact, this could be something where I could come in and co-teach with you a day and model what my thinking and yes. your thinking is and because of our different, different experiences yep. and connections. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready for that, we will get that scheduled. Okay, and, and we can, I can send you some resources for poetry. Mm -hmm. like. And then part of that modeling, I would want to do a write, like model how to re reflect on it in writing so that when the kids go to reflect maybe part of their independent practice or something, um, that they read it but then they're also responding to it as well. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so they're actually doing some annotating. Mm -hmm. So you're working on those reading skills that you've already embedded throughout the year mm -hmm. that I see the kids doing in there already. Annotating in text. Okay. All right, so then we do some modeling of that, and then you would like some resources. I heard you say some resources about actually making connections to science. Mm -hmm. um, real life applicable things. And just even poet, good poetry to use with the students for instruction and um, my guided reading groups. I'd like to pull in the poetry piece to my guided reading groups too. Um, Is there specific science concepts that you would like? I could try to find some um, materials that you guys have kind of... Really anything with space. Okay. Um, Hey, Grandpa Tucker has a space one. <laughs> I know that. Okay. <laughs> and it doesn't, because it doesn't have to be exactly what we're doing in science, just that they make that connection that, you know, we're studying it in science. Oh, this is something kind of okay. to do with that. So. Is there anything specific about social studies that you would want to tie in? Um, like a historical piece at all? I don't know if there would be anything with ancient Greece right now. Would there? Oh, there. Okay. Yeah, we'll be good. I'll find okay. you some stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mythology. Um, I have a ton, and I have a ton of like. I just don't have like poetry. I have a okay. ton of resources for this. Okay. As far as finding stories. Okay. So we've got that. It's just the poetry piece of it. Okay. So. So what might be interesting is having these kids reading these poems, like with you and those mm -hmm. guys reading and making those connections to other things, and then maybe they read a myth, mm -hmm. and then they have to turn that myth into a poem. Yeah. So um, those could be things mm -hmm. that... Now, a lot of my mythology-type poetry experience has been at the high school level, so I will find you materials <laughs> okay. that is not like... Perfect. Ulysses it is, or... It, it's like harder that. than what you think to find yes. age-appropriate. Yes. yes, yes. So, and even if we have to sit down, even I Even videos look, or yeah. pictures, it's... Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> dissecting poetry can be fun and interesting even at the senior level. So, <laughs> okay, ancient Greeks and tying it in with some mythology stuff, okay. so we can do that for sure. Okay, and then let's look back again at your summative kind of thing. Okay. You want them to be able to write reflectively about the poems that they mm -hmm. read and kind of see that big picture. We did teach a lot um, at the beginning, kind of front-loaded that abstract and that figurative mm -hmm. language concept. Is there some way that you think you would like to tie those key vocabulary or key learnings back into their summative assessment? 
Let me say that again. Yeah. So we talked about the beginning of like the abstract and mm -hmm. the figurative language. Um, in your summative assessment, they will be applying it, I believe, with, we'll have to make sure the poetry that you're giving to them has some of that abstract or figurative right. language into it mm -hmm. for them to be able to decipher so we can kind of see it. Is there another way that you want to, like a creative competency that you see coming out of this, or do you just want to stick to the writing? Um, I think stick to this for now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and maybe get back to you on that part because I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. And as this unfolds, if you see like, hey, there is something where I want to tie more. Because I don't know these. how they're going to respond to it yet. So maybe yeah. once we get it up and going and they're really into it, I think we could expect something like that. Whereas if they're really struggling with that abstract piece. Yeah. We can, and we can um, build in supports along the way mm -hmm. that, oh, this group's not getting, yeah. like you said, you had talked about being able to pull them and say, oh, yeah, they're not getting that. Yeah. Small <laughs> group and, okay, so, so that's. Which even on the, so the summative one, even to give, have a, the poem that they are using to be able to identify yeah. the ways the author uses figurative language. Yes, yes, that would be. A great way to do it. And if I, you know, and here's something else. You might have kids who can identify it, mm -hmm. but maybe they can't explain it. Yep. You know, thinking about some of those, your leveled kids mm -hmm. that you have in there. Um, so maybe you have an extension for some of those other ones that yes. mm -hmm. you can pull in. So identifying, or ex we'll put extension here for those for figurative language and those abstract concepts. Perfect. Okay. So, do all those different pieces, and then this is where we'll come down to planning for the summative. How are we going mm -hmm. to instruct based off that? Yep. Do you want to go into that today, or do you want to kind of see where we're at as we're building to that? Let's see where we're at as okay. we're building up to that. We know what we want to do. Um, I think see where we're at as far as what to use for it. Okay, sounds good. Um, now, the only other thing that I can think is, th I mean, this is such a fun, exciting thing, so you might have some kids, for me, but yeah. you might have some kids who go home and my counterpart would be crying right now if yeah. she was sitting here playing this lesson. She's like, oh, thank God she asked you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel that way with math, so, you know, it's like, yeah, unless I get so Grandpa good with Tucker. So I, I went to her for math and you, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's totally fine, because if it's not on Grandpa Tucker, I don't know what I'm going to do. No. <laughs> Okay, so um, collaborating with families on this because you might have okay. some kids that are going to go home and might be stressed out about poetry. So, mm -hmm. um, what are some ways that you reach out to families and let them know when your like new units are popping up or things that are going on in class? Um, newsletters. I put okay. it like upcoming things in my newsletters. We are. I did put in for a front row Juno, so maybe oh. even recording a lesson on figurative language or the abstract thinking so that they know what that concrete experience was so that when they're talking with their child yes. they can and here's something too if we don't if you don't have the Juno in mm -hmm. by then um, I can bring the swivel over okay. you can do it that way okay. so that way they can get that so we'll, we'll put swivel here too so I think that's a wonderful idea and then parents even at home can be talking about it or they get experience the poetry yes. with their kids so that's a great way mm -hmm. to do it okay well I'll make sure that that is up and going when you are ready. So when Perfect. do you think you're going to start the unit? What do you... Um, we are, right now we're kind of finishing up our fantasy. Okay. So even if we waited next week but the following week. Okay. And kind of end the year on it. Okay, sounds good. So I will, um, my next steps, I'm going to gather some resources for mm -hmm. you for some different types of poetry Perfect. that we can go through. Um, that's and that's where I really noticed when I started thinking about this. I'm like, I really don't even know what to look for, where to look for, or you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know Shel Sil Silverstein. Yeah. Well, that's that's <laughs> Sheila says that's the only poetry there is. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, if that was it, I'm good to go. But it's not. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll gather some resources for you. I will get them to you um, by the end of the week, next week for sure. But Perfect. let's see. I'm going to shoot for Wednesday and Thursday. I'll gather some things, and I will have this typed up in a nice format that you can understand. I, I'm good with Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then, so all you just need to do is to make sure you gather the materials for, like, the jar and those okay. kinds of things. Yep. 
And if you need help with any of that stuff, just let me know. Okay. I do have, um, I can pull some different art things, but what if I asked the art teacher over there, mm -hmm. Miss Dinley, if she would maybe have some drawings that the kids have done? Okay. That for your art concept mm -hmm. to tie a few in there? That'd be fine. Um, mm -hmm. So I can ask. The abstract and the yeah. name. Because she might have like, some really great examples. Yeah, yeah, because I'm just thinking, like, they could even see, like, when I think of nonfiction, it's pretty clear cut. Like, this is like a photograph, mm -hmm. where an abstract, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, like, teaching kids geometry. Yes. I feel like that sometimes can be... Yes. <laughs> yes. If I can make a connection to it with words, I'm fine. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, here's a thought too, it's something that we could do to extend it or, mm -hmm. or make it, you know, we could do, when you're doing that art connection, mm -hmm. we could utilize the 21st century classroom and we could have different pieces of art up on those tables and they could be writing their experiences. Oh, I like that. Or like on the screens? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So I Because when you were, when we were talking about that, I was thinking of just pulling it up on the Chromebooks. And just have like different centers and stations for them to rotate between. Because I've done that with like Norman Rockwell. Mm -hmm. I've just had them posted up around the room and then they respond to it and then we switch. But that yeah. would work. Yeah, and then that way you talked about earlier that they having that turn and talk. Mm -hmm. So having those small groups there mm -hmm. and be talking about, well, I don't think that's abstract. Well, I don't think. And uh, do we all agree? And maybe when they're doing this, throw in one that's like just a photograph of something. Yeah. That's. And here's the thing, too, is that um, trying to make those connections to the poetry that we have to realize that even something very literal mm -hmm. can be very abstract mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. But to you might be, no, it's just cut and dry. This mm -hmm. is black and white. And then the other person might see it in a totally different way. Like a picture of a cornfield. Oh, I just had this thought. And what do, because you're going to have something the oh, students can relate field? to. Like, I think all of our kids here could do that. But what that cornfield means to me with my experiences is going to be different then yeah does that make sense yeah it okay. does totally I love it um, and here's a connection to some of these kids too you were talking about music mm -hmm. have you seen it in color that song so it talks the video itself mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen the song itself mm -hmm. um, but it's have you seen it in color so they they're talking about events in life mm -hmm. that have happened so like wars and different pieces mm -hmm. And what we feel or see when we see a photograph mm -hmm. versus being there in color, right. real life. Yeah. Um, so that might be a cool song that we okay. could tie in with that. Perfect. Um, for that lesson over there. So we will, I can, when we're kind of looking at this and determining days, I can get this set up for us mm -hmm. for 21st Century Room. Perfect. So that we can do that. Okay. okay. That's awesome. I'm okay. excited about that, this piece, because I yeah. think even... And figure out a way that the kids can respond to it, I think would be really cool too. Okay. So there's a couple of ideas for responding. I mean, I, don't, I know mm -hmm. these kids don't have Twitter or something like that right. they can go to, but we could even, if you want to do a technology side of it, that you could just share it with parents about what they've done for that day. Um, or they could put it on the wall or. Like a kid blog thing? Yeah. Okay. I, this year, like last year, I got really into it. This year, it's all set up. They just haven't done it. Okay. So, like, next next week, I could just have them practice yeah. getting on it. Yeah. And then maybe something they could You do. could also, have you used Padlets before? No, but that would be a really good one. Because I've then seen they it could before. just Let's double-click and, and then do they that. could see all of it. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Because then the kids could see that. We could even have that on the center monitor where that mm -hmm. spot is where you sit around. And then the kids could come join around that mm -hmm. and look at what their different responses were. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah? Okay. So we can work on the Padlet for that. Um, so I am going to get the 21st century classroom. That stuff will get set up. Okay. Um, I, I can... Um, and the pieces of art for it? Yes. Okay. I can grab those different pieces, and I will try to pull some interesting pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually send... Um, John Deere has a really cool picture I saw yesterday. Uh -huh. It's a real photograph, but it looks like a painting. Yeah. Because the way they tweaked the the lighting um, mm -hmm. when they shot it. So that might be a cool thing. It has just the John Deere tractor yeah. and stuff um, for them to make some of those connections too. But we can, it doesn't have to be one picture. So we could have multiple pictures side by side mm -hmm. on those too. So, mm -hmm. but I can make a list or um, have the pictures in there and you can choose which ones you like. Okay. okay? Perfect. 
And then you're going to gather the concrete examples to get started. Yep. And I will develop some resources. And I'll have a just that resources page with share okay. on this Google Doc for you. To, and if you find something you really want to use, okay. pop in. and Right. And then we'll have to meet back to, f to yes. once we get to get this going. And mm -hmm. then, because I'd like this to be when we model the poetry, you know, you and I come in and demonstrate that the way one person understands it is different for other people, but then just different examples of poetry, yes. different ways they're written, yes. too, to look at that so that they can compare it. It'd be nice, too, to give them each a copy of the poetry that we use in our lessons and in their small groups to kind of yeah. keep a record of so that they can look back. So they kind of have like a poetry anthology yeah. with already... Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. And that poetry anthology piece, that could be part of your summative mm -hmm. right there. You've yep. got those experiences, and then they could use that to help them. The response And have the responses with that? with that? Yeah. Yes. That might be I something. Like so let's <laughs> add that down here as their anthology. Kay. But the anthology is not just a collection of poems. Mm -hmm. It is them interacting with them. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Love it. Okay. okay. Anything and else then, you can think of? Um, so with this here, where we... The Who Am I. It comes um, up through your art connection. So I will need to get... Oh, can, we, I, can I just take a picture of them? That's what all I did. I just went up close, got their face, printed them out, and then I cut them in half and taped them on a piece of paper. Okay, and that's what I'll do. So I'll get the pictures taken, too, and I'm just going to be like, okay. oh, I just need it. <laughs> yep. I just want to remember your beautiful face when you leave me next year. <laughs> I just want to take a picture. <laughs> just from here, though. Hold <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And if there's anything else that you are thinking of, let me know. Okay. Um, or if we get into it and you're like, I don't like this, let's go back. Because, you know, that's okay. how it is when we plan, right? Yep, yep. I like it. Sounds Thank you so, so good much. On paper. This is awesome. Well, I'm glad you let me film you and do this. So, yay, check, check. Yeah, on a Friday. <laughs> on a Friday. <laughs> when we look so wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much.